Conversations with Greg J is on. How y'all doing? Here we are again, another day. Thinking about the making of hip hop, you know. This is what we're going to talk about today. Got great guests coming through. And, uh, you know, it's all in the background, you know, of course, at Coffee Conversations. This is the place where we have culturally relevant conversations about a wide variety of subjects from a global perspective. And so uh, right now we're talking about that international phenomenon of, of hip hop. They're celebrating 50 years, they say, and just blessed to have been right there at the front row seat to watch hip hop being born, watch stars being born, being part of, uh, you know, important media messages talking about hip hop. And, you know, man, I was there. so. You know, Brother Greg going through his Rolodex here, see if I can get all my hip hop heads going. Y'all had Muffler, Dwayne Muffler Simon on the last time we talked about hip hop. But today, you know, this one is uh, near and dear to my heart, ladies and gentlemen. The poetess, Felicia Morris, good morning. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, yes. great. Awesome. Yay, 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 yay. It's so good to see you. Likewise. You. Hey, Greg. <laughs> What's going on in your world? Wow. Um, just being an entrepreneur. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, for those of you all don't know, you know, I was uh, Felicia's manager and she was uh, a budding female rap artist coming up in an exceptionally male dominated you know, man, I mean, you know, being a manager and representing the poetess, you can see, you know, the women really didn't have nothing coming, which is very like, you know, a challenge at all times. And, you know, when you reflect on those days, Felicia, man, what, you know, you see there's so many female rappers now and, and all of that. How does that make you feel as a OG in the game? Well, I'm glad that there are uh, more females out at the same time. I mean, back when I was coming up, um, you know, they had their one signature female for either the label or crew. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I'm glad to see that female rappers are making more money, doing more. So yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy for that. And yes, uh, Greg was my manager. Um, and he fought the good fight <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and labels really didn't know what um, to do with female artists really mm -hmm. back then. You were either, you either had to um, be almost naked or you were Queen Latifah. And mm -hmm. so I kind of was leaning toward the Queen Latifah, the conscious rap, the conscious hip hop. But the good thing about that is um, back then you were at, you had a variety to choose from. It wasn't just one thing. So you either had your conscious rap, your party rap, your gangster rap, your, you know, your sh a booty rap, all of that. So you had a, a nice little uh, array of hip hop and then you might choose to like all of them because, it was, you know, hip hop back then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you were also a journalist par excellence. And uh, I know our, our good friend Sheila Lester is here. I'm going to take this moment to bring her in and I want to talk a little bit about how it back in the day. Good morning. Morning. How Hello. are you? I'm well. How you doing? Doing all right, Sheila. Good to see you. Thanks Look at you. you. Yay. <laughs> So, you know, uh, before we go into that, I was going to really get into this uh, notion about, uh, you know, hip hop journalism and um, tell the folks a little bit of, uh, real quickly about your background there, Sheena, and then Felicia, I'm going to complete the question. Um, I started at the Los Angeles Sentinel newspaper and worked for a variety of independent magazines and uh, then got hired by Rap Pages magazine and then Vibe Magazine, and then Double XL Magazine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, when we say these notions about, you know, 50 years of hip hop, you know, you all are like, especially here in Long Beach, where 
we're based, um, uh, but we do, you know, have a, a global audience. But you know, there, there's a lot of talk about hip hop music, and especially from a Long Beach perspective. But what gives me pause is a lot of the people in control of telling that story were not there. <laughs> They did not have like a direct perspective of the growth of hip hop. That's why this series is called The Making of Hip Hop. And so, you know, as, as hip hop journalists, you know, Felicia, you had the hip hop countdown and report and then went on to be a renowned jock on, uh, what is that, uh, the beat? 92.3 mm -hmm. or before the 100? Yeah, well, both. Yeah, and okay. I started with you, with Lee Bailey at uh, at Radio Scope and the Hip Hop Countdown and Report. I don't think because people weren't there that they can't uh, report or make a documentary on a certain thing. People do history pieces all the time and they weren't there. So I think if you do the correct amount of research and interviews and all of that if you're doing the work to tell the story then it doesn't matter you know if, if you were there or not you know but um talk to the people who were you know um because there might be a lot of young people that aren't even from this generation that might want to um explore and and tell the story so sheena what are your thoughts um about what in particular about okay let me just ask you this question here okay here, so here's the thing so 50 years of hip-hop you know what are your reflections of 50 years is it 50 years exactly uh <laughs> I, I i i guess i mean yeah. it's as long it depends on you know i guess it depends on who you are and your own independent history you know i'm not going to mm -hmm. judge what people are um are recording as you know hip hop's beginning um i don't really yeah, have any on that one right there, you know, I've asked, we've had a couple people come through here to talk about the 50 years of hip hop and, and it, you know, it's always, it's a question, you know, like, is it really, you know, 50 years? And I've had, you know, last, like when I had uh, Muffler Simon on uh, the other week, he said, yes, August 11th, 1973. There are others who have come through who have said, no, I think, you know, because they're coming from a West Coast perspective. I, what, what I think it is, I don't think it was quite established as mm. hip hop in 73. I think some of the things that they were doing were like the foundation, um, like the basement parties and the park parties and stuff like that. I believe those are the foundation. So maybe they're accounting the foundation. And, and of course it is a part of the history, whether um, they called it hip hop back at, in 73 or not, because I didn't hear the word hip hop really until at least the 80s. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't hear the term hip hop in the 70s. Mm -hmm. It could have been on the East Coast, you know, or I was just out of the loop or I was mm -hmm. too young. But um, I don't know. I mean, I believe because even with Uncle Jam's Army here on the West Coast, they started in the 70s, but they weren't necessarily calling it hip hop. They were doing the same thing um, New Yorkers were doing, the, the parties. Well, they were having parties at like the Forum and the local uh, clubs in the city, but it was the same vibe. It was the DJ, it was the, the MC at the club. So and uncle jam's army they go back to at least the mid 70s so um so they can count that i mean maybe that is 50 years ago um right, right. Yeah, where yeah. where where they planted the seed and started to to the foundation and ultimately as long as it's a celebration of the artistry the genius the courage the expression um of a generation of uh, young uh, urban folks just coming up as best they could, expressing who they were, mm -hmm. then, you know, it could be 50, it could be 75, you know? Mm -hmm. So whatever's clever. Ultimately. Yeah, because people were rapping before hip hop. 
you know, they say some rappers like in the twenties and the thirties, and yes. you know, so. Yeah. No, I heard I heard a couple arguing on the bus in Philadelphia about whether or not uh, Stevie Wonder did a guest rap in As. <laughs> so uh, it's like, uh, okay, that was just fun to overhear, just for the sake of the conversation. Sure, yeah. sure. So I mean, we got to have something that says this is the date and time that this was originated mm -hmm. so so that it can be celebrated mm -hmm. um each year at that date and time so i don't have an issue with hip-hop 50. Yeah, um yeah. you know i yeah there's no argument for me because right, right, yeah. I, I think so, it was it was bubbling you mm -hmm. know it was starting to bubble in 73 it was mm -hmm where they planted the seeds and it grew yeah. into hip hop. You know, you're absolutely right. Cause like when you listen to um, old records, like you say, but all the way back to the twenties and thirties, they call it signifying that they're, they're basically throwing rhymes out there. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, yeah. that's Africanism for sure. You know, yeah, it's very interesting. Now, you know, let me ask y'all, both of you as journalists. And just, to, just on that note, a little, a uh, little longer back, um when before nwa mm -hmm. they um they did parodies of songs from dolomite and uh what was the blowfly mm -hmm. so they would listen to those songs and they and they, they would make their own versions of them so those people no one really looks at the fact that um rudy ray moore and blowfly um, had a heavy influence on NWA, sure. you know, and the Two Live Crew because the Two Live Crew is from Riverside, California, so they were doing the same thing out here, and they took it. They took it to Luke and in Miami and became the Two Live, uh, you know, Two Live Crew. But those were some other influence in terms of like um, the beginnings of. NWA and even gangster rap. I mean, they were influenced by majorly by those two uh, individuals. You know, let me ask y'all, you know, as you look back now upon hip hop history as journalists, what's the most profound story, Sheena, you have covered? Like where you sit back now and look back, you're like, dang, that was really something. One. Greg, I mean, out of 50 years of hip hop. Well, can I jump in? in? <laughs> yeah, ask okay. Felicia, I have no idea. Um, and this is a plug for my sister, Sheena. She just did the greatest day in hip hop. What's the, the byline, Sheena? Oh, what, the the, the, the audible, the greatest day? That's yeah, the, the greatest name? day. That's what it is. the greatest day is the um, iconic photograph, uh, hip hop photograph that she did for Double XL. So, Nice. I'm speaking from, you know, a fan's perspective. That's one of the things that I feel that Sheena did that was iconic, you nice. know, and it's on Audible, by the way, plug, plug. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah, narrated yeah, yeah. and wrote it. So All go right. check that out. It's a brilliant piece. So okay. Hey, look, if you can, uh, send the link in the chat right there. Okay. I will. Let me see. Uh, I, I, think I know I it's on. It it's up. on Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's on. Yeah, um, Amazon. yeah Audible. It's Audible. It's absolutely mm -hmm. via Audible on Audible. Thank you. Okay, I'm about to put the uh, link in there right now. Nice. Well, I can certainly um, add, uh, in addition to my thanks for that sweetness, um, a year after uh, Gordon Parks shot hip hop's um, artists on the mm -hmm. same steps that um, Art Kane shot jazz musicians for Esquire, Felicia did uh, an event in Los Angeles called A Day in the West um, in August of 1999. And uh, that photo has never seen daylight, unfortunately. Arnold and, took the photo. Arnold Turner, hello, hello. And that, uh, that picture never came out. And um, it certainly should. Every day that it's not out hopefully gives it some um, some more value to folks who realize how important it is those moments were so well that's a good information to know and uh yes duly noted 
uh, very interesting. Um, you know, when you think about famous photos, uh, you know, people like Arnold Turner, we, you've been thinking a lot about Arnold Turner, uh, Bill Jones, uh, on and on and on, you know, just the fabric of history that those folks have, Donna Dimely, you know, uh, who have captured over the years. And you know what, maybe we'll find that photo. How about that? I hope so. He has do? it. He, he took it. He has it anyway, but yeah. none of us have ever seen it. And that's the big mystery. Does it really exist? Is uh, did, did, did he have film in the camera that day? We don't know. <laughs> might, have had, might have had the cap on the camera lens. Who knows? We, we just don't know. So. Oh, man. Okay. But we had everybody there. I would say 85% of people who were instrumental in West Coast hip hop was there that day. Wow. There were a few major, one or two major folk missing, but I think Ice Cube was one of them. Which is one but, of the reasons why Arnold never put the picture out. He said that he was gonna superimpose Ice Cube. Oh, let it. Ice Cube kick himself for not being in the photo. Not I'm like, sorry. You know, everybody else showed up. Exactly. Right, exactly. right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I think Dre even showed up that day. If I'm not I mistaken. Think, I think he did too. Rockthebells.net or dot com. I keep saying dot net. All mm -hmm. They did a, a a story, I believe, last year, and they followed up. It might have been the only story that sort of existed about the day that didn't uh, that didn't result in what right. it should have. So. Okay. okay. All right. Well, that's a good history to, to know about. And let's continue to to really uplift that. I mean, we've really been all about preserving history from a culturally relevant perspective, finding ways to also present our art and uh, our history in uh, art type form, format. Um, I don't know if you all know, we've, we've held uh, three very nice uh, art exhibits out here in Long Beach, and uh, pretty soon we'll be exhibiting another one that is really celebrating what we call public art now, but we used to be called graph artists back in the day. But it, you know, some pretty profound art pieces that we found in the wake of the uh, Long Beach uh, uprising, and uh, we're taking all of these street artists and, and assembling them in a, a really nice. Um, art gallery setting and i'll invite you all to that you know maybe we should start looking for some of these famous photographs and mount a, a similar exhibit yeah um, that would be wonderful yeah because there's a lot of uh, great uh hip-hop photographers out there too that um i'm sure has some brilliant photos and historic photos that can be featured you know and there's a, a woman by the name of Vicki Toback who did a book a couple of years ago called Contact High, which basically gathered mm -hmm. contact sheets from famous uh, hip hop photo shoots that had taken place and put them together and put together a mix of uh, famous photos, some it's famous, some shoot. infamous, mm -hmm. some have never been seen. Um, but she mm -hmm. did a book and she did a traveling exhibit that actually traveled internationally because part of that yeah, it was here. That was the thing we that they had the greatest day mural. Yep, they had the greatest day mural uh, um, up on the up, up on a wall. It was yeah. huge, nice. and wonderful. So, mm -hmm. nice. and also respect.com. That's a website that um, was about um, capturing um, the imagery collected over those days of different famous photo shoots and. Um, photos from um, photo shoots that were not so famous, but perhaps should have been, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I didn't know that My Conception mm -hmm. did one. We were in New York in May, and there was a, a great exhibit there, and they showed a picture of uh, all the rappers from, well, most of the rappers from were all in the same gang. Oh, yay. And I, nice. I didn't know that photo nice. existed. I sent it to Jeff and because I took a picture of the picture and Jeff was like, wow, mm -hmm. like, you know, so wow. there probably is a lot of good photos out there that captured um, the artists of the day that that era and um, B plus, I mean, another brilliant for uh, I'm not going to even call him a hip hop photographer because he's not. 
he uh, just captured a lot of the just awesome pictures of Easy E. You know, he he's he's probably did them all. He did one of my um, station promos that I had when I was at, at the beat, and I love that picture to this day. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there's there they're out there. There's people, documentarians that are you know out there with material that needs to be put out there. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Uh, okay. Yeah, I love that you said that about Brian because Brian Cross shot imagery of um, artists when they were coming up, you know, before mm -hmm. they became famous, when he was just shooting hungry young people discovering their own voices at the good life, you know, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, Raz Kaz and Mean Green and Voodoo and Bird on Voodoo's porch you know, for their Western Hemisphere stuff, you know, just, just a part of the community that he was documenting too. Mm -hmm. The fact that it was hip hop was just a reflection of what he valued and what he cared to document. But he's got imagery of people all over the world just being, you know, their wonderful selves. And that's what, you know, real, uh, real photography is supposed to do and ultimately what real hip-hop journalism was supposed to do you know i'm lucky because i met my best friend in the world while working for a hip-hop magazine when i was early in my days at rap pages early in my days at rap pages we did a hip-hop a women in hip-hop special and as part of it we did a conversation with you know some female rappers sister soldier yo-yo poetess and Right after that conversation, which I was lucky enough to hold um, for the magazine, you know, Felicia and I just kept being friends. And so I know, needed a place to live. <laughs> <laughs> so hip hop has been responsible for all of the magic in my life without yeah. a doubt, you know, yeah. and I'm nice, sure that nice. our whole generation, a bulk of us can say that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, contrast for me, you all, like when you hear hip hop or rap music as we hear it today, with um, just contrast and give me your perspectives. Are we living up to its intention? Is it, I hear I hear people saying, um, you know, especially after the BET Awards, I kept hearing comments saying, you know, they were tired of the stripper culture. And then, you know, I always wonder when I'm talking to, you know, old hip hop heads, like, you know, the brother goes down the street with his boom box, you know, the lyrics are just, the, you know, it's a bit much. You know, I, you can say Luke was strip, stripper right. culture. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think Final the problem only and I were saying now, the same thing. The only thing that I say is different is that back then, you at least have more to choose from. Mm -hmm. And then now the media and the powers that be and the people that reach the masses, they choose that one sector of hip hop. There's good hip hop out there. Unfortunately, you either got to stumble upon it or look for it actively, it's, you know, because they're not um, putting it up um, on major, if you watch uh, They Clone Tyrone and yes. that whole thing about the music um, influencing um, the audiences, if you play love music, you're, you know, you're falling in love, you play thug music, you're ready to go out and kill somebody. It's like they are programming what they want us to hear. But if you dig deep and support these artists that are making not necessarily conscious music, but at least uh, music's to your own personal standard, then support them. Like, you know, I don't think, um, I, don't, I'm, I, I don't talk down to the new generation of rappers because people said that about our generation of rappers. Like, they hated rap music back when we were heavy into rap music. But I just say that, there is good rap music out there. I've stumbled stumbled upon some, and I love it. I even like some of the stuff people criticize. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, I like I like Cardi B. I, I like the baby. So you know, um, but 
back then you had you had more of a variety to choose from. You had the the conscious rap, you had the the gangster rap, you had the Luke rap, you had the down south rap. Now when you go drive, you could drive across the country and tell what region you were in just by driving through and listening to the radio. Now everybody is playing the same thing. So you don't know, you know, even LA rappers, you can't tell they're from LA anymore. So unless, no, they, unless they say they're from LA, you know. It's pop music now. Hip hop mm. music is now pop music. It's not resistance music. Rap and music. It was. I don't want to say hip hop, yeah. but rap music. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Rap music is pop music. And when hip hop was, um, when the music of hip hop culture was being created, when hip hop was still in its, you know, young stages and its young years, it really was about resistance. It really was about expression in a way that was not about you know popular mainstream culture and now it is the difference is is that what didn't happen is that whatever values we were supposed whatever we were supposed to quote unquote teach the new generation about hip-hop culture maybe we didn't do that um at least as far as at least as far as some of the criticism that i hear from folks there's a lot of people who have a lot to whine about hip-hop but they didn't do anything to try to make sure that this generation you know, learned what they could from our generation and that the lessons that we didn't learn that we could have instilled in them, we didn't, you know. Um, I'm happy for anybody who wants to pick up a mic and express their reality to someone who's gonna care about it and value it and, or just be entertained by it ultimately, you know. Just the, the difference is, is that when hip hop was young, it was urban youth culture and now, it is pop culture, period. And I know that you know a lot of people resent that, you know, but it is what it is. So you can either be a part of making it better, being a part of the conversation that um, that gives it the value that we want it to, um, or we can just introduce these new kids to the folks of our generation who, you know keep it dope you know what i mean the thing i mean I, I like a lot of the new kids now too still turned on by the folks in our generation you know what i mean like i don't necessarily have to turn on any new stuff because our old stuff is still doper than a lot of what's out today you know but it's not a, a judgment it's just my own personal taste you know mm -hmm. when i was trying when my kids were growing up they resisted hip-hop because they were just you know okay hip-hop is cool but again they recognized that it was sort of a popular music and they were almost resisting popular music and going into classical, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. again, I just think it all depends to your exposure to it, what you were taught about it in terms of what to value. Um, and hopefully, you know, I just hope that this new generation knows what they can do with it and chooses to do so. You know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of what's not happening in hip hop has to do with um, what we're not talking about socially, you know, what we're not doing economically, business-wise that we could be doing, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy for the new generation. I'm happy for anybody who's living the life that reflects what they care about and of being of service to themselves and their family and their community, you know? All right, all right, well said. I know y'all have to go. We're out here working, striving, making things happen. Uh, I just really am so thankful that you all took the time out to have a little co coffee conversation with Greg J. Thank you, thank you, thank you for You're so welcome. much. welcome. Thank you, Greg, and happy yeah. birthday, by the way. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's your birthday. Now, see, we should have started with that. Happy birthday, uh, Greg. Oh, <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes, I was. Uh, Me and Greg now. go way back. We, we go, go back, back to Lee Bailey. That's where yeah. I met Greg, really from the very start of my professional career. I've known Greg mm. Johnson and um, you've always been a stand up guy and, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You know, thank we you. appreciate you. So thank you. Uh, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. We have, we're supposed to be going to Africa now. You say when, so we can get our okay, coins. Okay, so look. Together. Okay, March, Please. March, March. Okay. All right. March 2024. I'll start saving my coins now. I'll I know I'm inviting them. myself, but yeah, I am inviting myself. <laughs> no, no, you you must come. Listen, I have so many friends over there now, 
that our industry and everything and man i would love for you all because i mean like you say we go way back right and just to roll over there and and just you know kick it with my friends who are on the radio who are in music who are in television and it's especially in south africa which is this trip to south africa we just came back from ghana but um this one is south africa and it's just fly you know what i mean to and it would be my honor to have y'all rolling with me you know the squad coming through to uh my friends in south africa it would be a exceptional honor for me all uh, right we'll yeah. keep us posted yeah for sure yeah. All right, all right. Guys, have, enjoy your day. Enjoy your day too. All right. Yay. Thank you. All right, y'all. You get this podcast on Facebook, you know, YouTube, all those different places. We repurpose the audio wherever you get your favorite uh, podcast, you know, speaker, iHeart, Google, Spotify. Just type it in a couple conversations with Grant Jay. Remember, love one another. Love one another. Love one another. Peace and blessings.